Well, good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Hope you guys are uh, doing well. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a concept that I think is very non-intuitive, um, yet it is a concept that most of us are relatively or very familiar with, and that is the concept of pH. And I, I guess the first question I'd ask is, well, what is pH? What are we talking about when we talk about pH? And I, I think what comes to mind for a lot of us is, well, it's a, it, it represents us this cool scale. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that scale up here. And, and we know that the scale goes up to 14 here. We have a 7 in the middle and then a 0 down at the bottom. And pH, somehow, this, this scale represents this concept of pH. And most people, I think, would say that, well... 14 is really basic, and I mean the, the chemistry concept of basic, and if, if, if you're not quite sure, don't worry, we'll, we're going to cover that in a little bit, and most people would say, well, 7 is neutral, and 0 is acidic, and if I go up from 7, I get basic, and I go down from 7, I get acidic, and I, I think most people would agree that's the intuition. And that would be correct intuition. So the question still remains, well, what is this pH here? And I think a lot of people would, would agree that pH is, is somehow a measure of, of something called acidity or an acid. pH is acid. And I would go along with that for now. So then the question is, well, if pH is this scale here and pH measures acid, is there kind of a breakdown in intuition. And, and I would dare say, yes, there is a breakdown, because if I, if I were to make a scale, intuitively, the higher a scale goes, the more of whatever that, that thing is that I'm looking at. So in the case of me, if I were to make a pH scale looking at this concept of acid, I would make 14 more acidic, 0 less acidic, but what we have here is we have an inverse relationship. The lower this goes, the higher this concept of acid is. And I think that is where our intuition just kind of comes to a screeching halt and totally breaks down. So hopefully we can try to reestablish uh, that intuition that some of you may, may have had when you took chemistry or just make it anew for people that aren't quite uh, understanding what's going on here. Okay, so... I would ask a question, what does pH measure? Most people would say acid, and I would ask, well, what is an acid? What is an acid? I think that's a fair question. And there are really, there are two standard definitions of what an acid is. The, the first definition is, is a definition that I'm going to use because it's more relevant, um, or not necessarily more relevant, it's just easier to understand. It's intuitively easier to understand, and that is something called the Bronsted-Lowry uh, B R O. I hope I spelled that right. Bronsted Lowry. And what the Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid says is basically an acid is a proton donor or a hydrogen ion. Okay? Two is something called the Lewis definition, and the Lewis definition is is, is a bit more general, and it, it and it is perhaps a, a bit harder to understand, and that is anything that accepts a lone pair of electrons is a Lewis acid. Now I'm going to focus on this definition today, the Bronsted-Lowry. So we can kind of go, okay, well, there's that Lewis definition, but we're going to focus on Bronsted-Lowry. Okay, so first of all, I would ask, well, what is a proton donor or a hydrogen ion? Well, to understand that, we just need to look back into chemistry a little bit, and we, we look at the hydrogen atom. And the hydrogen atom looks kind of like this. Actually, we can't really see it. Uh, for what it, it, it really is, if there is even a way to really see it. Um, but the, the, 
the standard uh, way of looking at it is in the center of the hydrogen atom there is a nucleus that consists of a proton with a positive charge and then somewhere around the nucleus in a cloud of probability density in a, 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 what we call an orbital there is an electron okay and when the hydrogen atom loses its electron for for one of, of many numerous um, one of many numerous things for lack of better words can occur that'll make it lose its electron what we're left over with is a proton a proton all by its lonesome and that proton is what we call a hydrogen ion or an H plus it's a hydrogen that no longer has an electron now when a hydrogen doesn't have an electron, that hydrogen is rather unhappy. Because uh, as we know, a hydrogen would actually like to have two electrons. Because we know that if I put two electrons in this orbital around the hydrogen atom, it will be happy, it will be a stable atom, and it will take on a configuration um, of helium. We know that helium has two electrons in that, that orbital. It's very happy, it doesn't react. So if you can imagine that helium is really happy, hydrogen with one electron is not all that happy. It would, it would like to do something to, to maybe get a hold of another electron, maybe share, and that's where we get bonding occurring. Um, but if you can imagine a hydrogen without an electron is really not all that happy, and that makes it rather reactive. And that is really the concept of an acid. An acid is... For, for the purposes of, of, of this discussion today, it's a proton all by its lonesome. And really the chemistry definition is, um, do we see these protons floating around our body all by themselves? No, generally what happens is we have something called water in our body. And water kind of looks like this, two hydrogens and an oxygen. We know the oxygen has something called electronegativity. Uh, it likes to pull the electrons to it. It hoards the, the electrons, if you will. And um, that gives uh, the oxygen a, a partial negative charge, and it gives these hydrogens partial positive charges. So the water molecule um, has this, uh, for lack of better words, uh, a kind of a dipole going on where it has partial negative, partial positive. And when I have acid in my body, protons, those protons are attracted to the negative hydrogen. So what, when that occurs, we actually get something called... Um, if you can imagine that proton being attracted, now it's not attracted real heavily to that, that oxygen and it can leave rather quickly and react with other things. So it's still acidic, uh, but it is attracted to that oxygen and when that happens, we get something called an H3O or a hydronium, hydronium ion. And I'm really that's the proper way of looking at this whole acid-base stuff in the body because our body is an aqueous environment. Um, really those protons are, are going to be attracted to the oxygen and, and, we, and that'll actually produce an H3O or a hydronium ion. Um, now, for the sake of whatever lecture you may do, a hydrogen, a proton, a hydrogen ion, or a hydronium ion all really mean the same thing, and that is acid. So when we look at the pH scale, going back to the original question, pH scale measures an acid, and the way I look at pH is I just think of potential of hydrogen, or per hydrogen, per hydrogen. So pH is always hydrogen, or the hydrogen ion to be specific, a hydrogen uh, without an electron, a proton, a hydrogen ion, or a hydronium ion all mean the same thing. And when I have more of these in the body than I should, I become acidic and my pH drops. Um, and we'll talk about why there's this weird relationship, but hopefully everybody is on the same page uh, as to what an acid is and as to what pH really is. pH measures an acid. An acid is a hydrogen atom without an electron or a hydrogen ion, a proton, or a hydronium ion. All mean the same thing. Okay, guys, hopefully that helped um, with understanding what an acid is, now we'll talk about how we're actually measuring this acid. It's a bit more non-intuitive. Take care, everyone.